Deux ans après Sega Superstars Tennis, Sumo Digital et Sega s'apprêtent à remettre le couvert avec Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. Mais cette fois, pas question de jouer à la balle. C'est sur les circuits que les personnages cultes de Sega vont en découdre. Nous avons profité du passage à Paris de Craig Duncan, directeur de développement chez Sumo Digital, pour lui poser quelques questions sur son jeu. Sumo Digital et Sega have been working together for years and have a very, uh, very good collaborative relationship. Um, Sumo, two years ago now, uh, did Sega Superstars Tennis, uh, which was obviously gave Sumo some great experience in working with the Sega IP um, and different IP holders. And you know, we really, really liked that franchise. Sega really liked the franchise and the crossover of. You know, the beauty of Sega is it has all these great IP that, you know, it, it's just this catalogue and wealth of really, really cool characters and cool settings. Um, so we were really keen on really developing that franchise further and given Sumo's extensive experience in doing racing games, having done OutRun and, and a number of other races, uh, it just felt like a really great choice to do a, an item character-based racer. Uh, featuring the characters from the Sega universe. So, uh, and once Sumo and Sega had kind of had a lot of those conversations, it was it was quite easy to go forward from them. Not really. The the hard bit was really defining what which exact characters we'd use. Uh, so obviously we had a list of all our favourite characters and all the characters we'd grown up with and played you know, through Dreamcast and, and even further back through 8-bit and 16-bit uh, Sega consoles. Uh, and Sega had their own list of characters that they thought were pretty cool. And what, what we ended up with was a kind of hybrid of the two lists. So there were some that were on our list that didn't make it and some that Sega wanted. That And we, we just decided on the best character and track roster for the game, really. Lot, lots and lots. Um, take Sonic for example, because I, I need to be careful about which original team, so not to give away an IP. Um, so you know, we work very closely with Sonic Team in Japan. You know, even down to you know Sonic's car design. So we'd do some concepts on what we thought Sonic's car should look like. Sonic Team would do some concepts, and it, it might be a case of you know maybe we went with one of our concepts, but they wanted the lights changed on the back of the car or. They wanted it to you know, look slicker and look faster. So we just iterate all these ideas between us and the original IP holder uh, and the original team that worked on the franchise until we got something we were both happy with. Because uh, obviously those guys, you know, I mean, we've been working with their IP for three years. They've been working with their IP for 10 years. Uh, and that, that experience is, is you know, crucial. We have what is our Sega Shop system, uh, so we've not gone for a traditional unlock system, but everything you do in the game earns you Sega miles. So when you race a Grand Prix, when you do some missions, when you race single play race, when you race online, you get Sega miles and they total up. And then you can go and spend your Sega miles in the shop to buy additional characters, uh, additional tracks, um, you know, music tracks to play that are related to that IP but not the original one, maybe some pieces of artwork, so very much. Um, we've tried to keep an open unlock structure so as you download the Sega Miles you can then go in and really spend those miles on what, what you want to unlock and obviously when you unlock a character there's a full character bio that tells you about them and where they've come from, what games they've been in and uh, and likewise with the tracks as well, so lots of good fanboy stuff. Between 20 and 40, how about that? Is that vague enough? Uh, we, we are talking to Sega a lot about DLC at the moment. Uh, we've not finalised anything, but it's, it's a probability, yes. Not sure on that. Generally, the content is the same across platform. Um, you know, whether whether Sega have got any further plans on that. Uh, we haven't locked the character roster yet, so that's why I'm being a little bit vague on that. But uh, yeah, who, who, who knows? Mario Kart's a great game. We've got a lot of Mario Kart fans in the studio. Um, I think as a 
as a direct comparison, I think we're probably more of a racer than Mario Kart is, so I think our, our gameplay is a lot faster, it's a lot more frenetic, it's a lot more intense, there's a lot more going on. Um, and I think, hopefully, you know, Mario Kart does a lot of stuff really, really well, hence why it's got so many fans and why uh, a lot of people love it. Hopefully what they can do is look at our game and look at the things that are familiar to them that Mario Kart does well and see some of those things and then see what we do on top of that. Um, so, you know, that, that tailors the Wii and DS. So I, I would hope people that have been playing Mario Kart will play our game and, and really see it as a good extension on from that. Um, for PS3 and 360 and PC, there's obviously never been a Mario Kart. Uh, so, bring, so to bring that item-based gameplay to those platforms and to those audiences, particularly in multiplayer, because you know it is, it, it's quite a unique proposition, um, and to have that battle-based gameplay rather than just a straight race, um, it is really exciting to bring that that kind of game to those platforms. You know, Mario Kart is very much set in in Mario's Super Mario as well. Um, whereas obviously we have a lot of different IPs which means from a track variation point of view we can have a huge wealth of, of varied environments for you to drive through um, and then each character has its own all-star move as well so as well as the common items and weapons that you use against each other each character has their own specific special move uh, which again is very different to what's been done before We've been working a lot on um, on player feedback and we, we've been focus testing the game a lot, so bringing in a lot of new players. Uh, and I think as a general point, yeah, seeing people now really smile and enjoy the game uh, it is, re is a real good feeling because I think overall as a game it's really started to come together now. I think specifically uh, the Wii motion control that we've just put in with the steering wheel uh, is is excellent and we've just got that to the point where it's starting to feel really good uh, so a big fan of that uh, obviously on a character point of view uh, I have my favorite character in the game which is really cool uh, or one of my favorite characters from an old Sega game uh, it's one of the what an announced one so I can't say what it is but you know to play that character in the game is really cool Not really. I mean, it, it was one of those things that once, uh, and I can't remember if that was one we suggested or one that Sega suggested, but it, it was one that came up in that initial, you know, brainstorming of which characters could we have. And of course, you know, the Ryu, the, the Ryu Shenmue fork truck it is legendary, you know. So uh, it, it was that very logical thing of like, well, let's have, let's have Ryu and his fork truck, you know, that would be awesome. And it's like, well, you know, let's have him on his bike and let's have his fork truck as his all-star move. And, and that's really kind of where, where that conversation got to. And, and essentially we worked a prototype, put it into the game and everyone loved it and it fitted. And the, the important thing with every IP we've used, we've stayed very, very faithful to the IP down to the soundtrack that plays when that character does its move down to you know the way they look, down to every detail, down to every detail their all-star move, which is a character specific special move, has to fit in with that character and IP. You know, it's not about just putting someone in a game for the sake of it, it needs to, to be consistent and really honor that IP. Uh, and you know, Shenmue again, you know, a, a huge fan of that too, to, to put Rio in the game was awesome. Obviously, you know, Sega were very, very uh, proactive in giving us all the original assets, but we really had to start again, but using that as reference. Um, so, you know, so our, our Rio model is built for our game. We needed to get it absolutely right, and then obviously what we thought was right, we then sent it over um, to the original creators, and, and they had their feedback on what they thought, and, and it's not just the character and the clothes and everything else, it's how he animates, you know, how he moves on the vehicle, how he, how he, when he does his all-star move, if he jumps, how that character would jump, and, you know, there's a lot of really fine detail that, it, it's that little attention to detail that people that are really fans of that IP will see it, and, you know, the fact that our forklift truck is modelled to every little fine detail, the same as the one in Shenmue, just kind of shows that we care. 
Again, we've not announced all of the tracks yet. You, you're just going to have to watch this space on what hasn't been announced. Okay. And wait and see. Les joueurs pressés de retrouver sur les pistes des personnages comme Sonic, Ryo de Shenmue ou encore Beat de Jet Set Radio devront maintenant attendre la sortie de Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing prévue pour le début de l'année prochaine.